everyone, a very good evening. You're watching The Money Show on ET Now. I'm Ubina Kapati. This is the show where we get you your daily dose of personal finance. Uh, we answer your questions and queries as well. So first up, let's uh, tell you what we have lined up on the show. It's perhaps going to be called as an ETF special. Uh, we are going to be having... Uh, uh, you know a chat on ETFs and you know the nifty 50 uh, benchmarked ETFs uh, have certainly got um, have reached quite a momentous milestone they've managed to cross 1 lakh crore rupees in AUMs and that is something that's really uh, been grabbing a lot of eyeballs so we'll be having Mukesh Agarwal the CEO of NSE Indices joining us on the show to talk about you know how or how can investors find uh, the opportunity to invest in NSE indices? And we'll also then later on be joined by Vishal Jain, the head of ETF with Nippon Life India AMC. And he'll talk about uh, how essentially does an ETF fit into your portfolio. So um, let's get on board uh, Mr. Mukesh Agarwal, the CEO of NSE Indices, to talk about this and more. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, thank you so much for joining us today on ET Now. To start with, um, what do you think has led to this uh, AUM crossing 1 lakh crore rupees? This is also only the nifty 50, uh, you know, ETFs, not all the ETFs in total. So it's definitely a very momentous uh, achievement. And that we just, in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of traction. So what's really led to this? And if you could explain to us the significance of, you know, these AUMs crossing 1 lakh crores. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you, Mubina. Good evening to you and good evening to the our viewers and as you correctly mentioned that the AUM tracking nifty 50 index has crossed rupees 1 lakh crore as at August end and if you look at the total ETF industry total ETF industry the AUMs have crossed 2.07 lakh crores as of August end and most of the growth what you will see at the growth has happened over the last five years if you look at five years back the AUM of nifty 50 ETF would have been around 1500 crores and the industry AU was 7,000 odd crores. So the industry has grown from 7,000 odd crores to 2 lakh plus crores over the last five years. Nifty 50 ETF has grown from 1,000 to 1,500 crores to 1 lakh crores. So that is almost doubling every five years, So which is a very phenomenal growth. Now, why this growth and how this has happened? So if you look at why ETFs are doing well, because ETFs, they have their own inherent characteristics like low cost diversification and transparency but what actually has driven the growth of ETFs in the country there are a couple of factors one is the government of India started disinvestment through ETF route in early 2014 so they decided to divert stocks through an ETF route and they launched CPSC ETF using Nifty CPSC index that was one and second thing is the most significant event was EPFO, the pension fund, deciding to invest in equities through the ETF group. So they started somewhere, investing somewhere in August 2015. And that is how we see the growth happening over the last five years because they started with investing 5% of their incremental money into the equity markets through the ETFs. And at present, they are investing around 15% of their incremental inflows into the ETF. So today, if you look at in the ETF space, there are overall 82 ETFs which are available. The AUM is around 2.07 lakh crores and out of which 10 would be the debt ETFs and around 72 are equity ETFs. And within that space, there are 63 ETFs, 63 out of 82 ETFs, they track Nifty indices and today ETFs are available on 26 Nifty indices, there are 63 ETFs available and total asset tracking Nifty indices is 1.6 lakh crores. And also one good thing is there has been increasing retail awareness. So five years back, if you would meet people, not many would talk about ETF. But today, if you talk to people, there is increasing awareness. Retail investors have started talking about ETF and that is also driving the growth. All yes, right. Mr. Agarwal, I just wanted to understand from you that, um, you know, when it comes to essentially tracking the Nifty 50, uh, would you believe that, um, you know, the ETF would be um, uh, the easiest way to do so? Because, you know, yes, everybody wants to buy large cap companies. It would be great, right? But the cost of holding that is, is obviously quite high. 
So do you think that you know simply buying into a Nifty 50 ETF would be the easiest and not to mention the most low cost way of doing so? Yeah, uh, you are, what you said is absolutely correct. Today you can buy one ETF on Nifty, ETF on Nifty 50 for uh, as low as 120 rupees. Just imagine buying an ETF for 120 rupees on a Nifty 50 ETF and using by 20, one by investing 120 rupees, you are able to buy 50 largest companies in the country. I think that is the simplicity. And even if you look at the fund management fees, you have ETFs on Nifty 50 which are available for as low as 3 paisa or 3 bips, which is the 3 to 5 bips, which is the fund management fee. So low cost, plus you can buy in small amounts. And second thing is you can buy because the ETFs trade in the cash segment of the stock exchanges. So you can buy the ETFs anytime during the day while the markets are operating based on your convenience and requirements. All right. Um, what sort of, uh, you know, or, or do you think that, you know, in these last five, six years, like you as well mentioned, you know, it's gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, do you think that people are now more interested towards ETFs as opposed to maybe even, you know, the actively managed funds, which again are benchmarked uh, or which again use the Nifty 50 as their benchmark? Yeah. So if you look at the total, see, basically ETFs are passive, actually the passive funds. And apart from the debt and equity ETFs, what I spoke about, you also have gold ETFs and you also have index funds, which are all passive funds. So today, today the total passive fund industry size is around 2.32 lakh crores. And the total AUM of the mutual fund industry is 27.5 lakh crores. So this 2.32 lakh crores accounts for approximately 8.46% of the total AUM of the mutual fund industry. And if you look at the same number five years back, five years, I think this number was around one and a half percent. And even one year back, this number was 5.5, approximately 5.5%. So the AUM of passive funds, which also includes gold ETF, debt equity ETF, and index funds was 5.5% one year back. Today, it is around 8.5%. And five years back, this was 1.5%. This clearly shows that there is increasing traction for passive funds, which includes ETFs, gold ETFs, and index funds. And that is the case what we are seeing. And also, like, if you look at, the main traction has happened over the last one year. So if you look at last one year, which is the period September 1, 19 to August 31st, 2020, in last one year, the incremental inflows into the ETFs has been something like 65,000 crores. So out of 2 lakh 7,000 crores, approximately 65,000 crores have come into the last one year. So that has been the kind of case. And last one year, if you see, there has been a first corporate bond debt ETF was launched by Edelweiss in association with the government of India, Ministry of Finance, and that is called Bharat Bond 22, Bharat Bond, sorry, Bharat Bond ETF. And they have done the IPOs, two IPOs they have done. One is in December 19, and the other one is July 20. So these two IPOs have mobilized 25, approximately 25,000 crore. Just imagine IPOs of ETFs, two IPOs of two Bharat Bond ETFs have mobilized 25,000 crore. So there has been a lot of traction in the last one year. And Year, if you look at the yearly flows, the yearly flows are just increasing. And another very interesting statistics which I would like to share is, if you look at the ETF folios today, ETF folios are around 25 and a half lakh, 25.5 lakh folios which are there in the industry for the ETFs. Out of 25.5 lakh folios, approximately 13.5 lakh folios have been created in the last one year. So that is the kind of increasing awareness we are seeing for the ETFs. And that is the kind of increasing demand we are seeing for the ETFs in the country among the retail investors. Because retail investors account for approximately 98% of the folios, this 25.5 lakh folios which I mentioned, retail investors account for 98% of those folios. Well, you know, um, uh, we, yes, that point with respect to the divestment done by the government via ETFs as well has played a major part in essentially uh, 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 bolstering um, the way money has come into this category ETF. Remember folks that in the last two, three years we've seen the government as well uh, offer the shares that they own in various public sector enterprises, be it a coal India or, or you know BHEL, NTPC etc. They offered it to the public, but what they did is they packaged it together as an exchange traded fund. So, you know, for people like you and me, we can again, like, uh, you know, Mr. Agarwal mentioned, at a, at a lower price than perhaps what uh, it would take for us to buy each share of maybe a coal India or an NTPC. At a lower price, we have all of these shares clubbed together 
and you know with us and uh, that's essentially an ETF the best part is of course that since it's exchange it's an exchange traded fund so you can buy or sell these funds anytime via the NSC which is of course uh, uh, one of India's largest exchanges okay uh, Mr. Agarwal let's talk about then um, the other point and that is debt ETFs uh, we often say a lot about equity ETFs for the simple reason also that equities as a category is I guess a little simpler for viewers to understand for you know especially retail investors to understand as opposed to debt ETFs which often come along with a lot of jargons as well right um, so how do essentially uh, debt ETFs what sort of an opportunity is there for debt ETFs um, you know in debt ETFs for investors uh, to exploit or use See, if you, let me start with the global first. Globally, if you look at debt ETFs account for approximately 22-23% of the total global AUM. So what is the global AUM today? Global AUM is around 7 lakh crore US dollars or 7 trillion US dollars out of which 22-23 trillion is the debt ETF. Now in India out of 2.07 lakh crores, the debt ETF accounts for approximately 14% and that also 14% is mainly because of the Bharat bond ETF which was launched in December 2019. But for the retail investors, I would say that ETF is one of the very, very good product to invest in because the Bharat Bond ETF, the way it has been conceptualized, it is called Fixed Maturity ETF. We have ETFs which are available maturing in four different years, one in April 23, April 25, April 30, and April 31. The beauty of Bharat Bond ETF is because it is a fixed maturity ETF, so the yields are predictable so if you get into this ETFs at an yield today and if you hold on to this ETF till maturity you know that you are expected to get this point like today the 10 year ETF Bharat Bond ETF the yield is around 6.8 percent and if you buy one ETF today you know that the 10 after 10 years in April 30 or April 31 if you hold on to maturity your returns will be approximately 6.8 percent that is one second thing is the quality of the portfolio these Bharat Bond ETFs are investing only in AAA public sector government owned entities the credit quality of this portfolio is very good as I said they are very very tax efficient because they are not paying you an interest it's a kind of a cumulative bond wherein the entire interest earned during this 10 years is paid to you at the end of the 10 year or on maturity so because of which what happens that it is fully it is fully tax efficient because whatever capital gain is there that is treated as long term capital gain and once you adjust it for the inflation index the tax payable on those on the capital gain on the bar and bond ETF is very very low so there have been some calculations like I just said if you invest today it is around 6.8 percent and if you after 10 years on maturity after paying tax because you would be adjusting for the capital gain index the returns would be around 6% plus. So the tax payable on Bharat Bond ETFs is very, very low. And I think the way these Bharat Bond ETFs have been conceptualized, because we ourselves have seen that after the success of this product, a lot of AMCs have started talking to us. They are thinking in terms of launching more uh, fixed maturity ETFs, and which is the right thing for the investors. All right. Okay, uh, great, Mr. Garbal. Uh, so, when it comes to you know investing in mutual funds, uh, again we know right there are so many AMC's out there. You as well mentioned that the Nifty 50 ETF is one of the most popular ones. There are the most number of uh, you know funds uh, associated with the Nifty 50 ETF itself. But even apart from ETF, there are so many in the large cap category itself, which are again benchmarked with the Nifty 50. Uh, for those individuals who may be a little confused as to okay which one do I pick uh, especially from the actively managed especially for those individuals who may be financially not that savvy or just have too much of their own business to take care of and you know would like to leave um, this money management bit on to NSC do you think that uh, you know investing in the ETF is the best way to do so I think you said it absolutely correct first of all I just like to correct that NSC will not manage money we just license the index to the fund managers who launch this ETFs on our index and for people see as you said most of, because we keep doing the studies and most of the large cap funds which use nifty 50 for the benchmarking most of them are not able to outperform the index there would be funds which are able to outperform but I said most of them are not able to outperform so for a layman or a normal investor it would be very difficult to choose which fund is going to outperform or keep to choose the outperforming fund and another data which shows that same fund need not be outperforming the index year after year. So today you might have fund one which is 
be the best performer tomorrow you might have fun two in third year you might have fun three so year after year picking the winner is very very difficult so that's why the concept of passive investing or etfs come in next standard exchange traded funds for investors you just buy the index and you don't try to choose the winner amongst by choosing the active funds which is going to outperform not going to outperform so this is the simplest way of investing in the equity markets by choosing a broad based index like nifty 50 and picking up an etf on that index so uh, okay all right great and and yeah you know of late any which way is passive investing uh, has been creating a lot of prominence uh, Uh, and and yeah again just um, you know a a a word of uh, uh, you know uh, a word of uh, sort of ensuring that our investors know nse does not manage funds uh, it's of course the different amcs that manage funds but when it comes to an etf what these amcs do is essentially that they try, they essentially uh, invest just how the nifty 50 is curated um there's maybe just a little bit of tracking error here and there but otherwise um, it essentially just totally apes the nifty 50 so if let's say there's 30% weighted of banking in the nifty 50 then even the and nifty 50 etf which may be managed by any amc will have roughly a 30% weighted so that's uh, basically how it works um even stock wise essentially uh, all right uh, mr agarwal uh, what is the way forward for etfs from your own you know i think one of the best benefits of an etf is the fact that it's exchange traded so you know i know the value of my fund uh, whatever i own because i can immediately find it out as to what the price is on nsc uh, but how how liquid is it i mean uh, is it very easy for me to buy or even sell uh, you know my funds on the exchange so what we have seen that the trading volumes on the etfs on the equity etfs and other etfs also the trading volumes have been increasing they are increasingly becoming more liquid so there are some etfs which are available on which the liquidity is quite good so i would say that investors can buy and sell etfs with quite an ease so that is not a problem and so other thing is uh, i think going forward we because we keep uh, one of the job of us in the index companies is to keep launching new indices so we launch new indices which will help in as uh, a aims is to launch more etfs on those indices and that will offer a variety to the in- investors so investors can pick and choose from what strategy they want to follow and which index to they want to invest in so like we have etfs available on nifty 50 we have etfs available on nifty bank we have etfs available on nifty private bank if someone wants to take an exposure only to private bank stocks so they can choose an etf which is tracking nifty 50 private bank which is which has got a portfolio of 10 private banks similarly recently people have launched etfs on nifty it index so you have two etfs which got launched on nifty it it index in the current financial year again if someone wants to take a someone has a positive view on it industry and they want to take an it exposure to it stocks they can buy the etf tracking nifty it index so there is a wide wide range of etfs available in the market on the our nsc exchange depending on your portfolio allocation depending on your investment strategy an investor can pick and choose which etf they want to invest in all right uh, mr garwal according to you what are the challenges before you know nifty 50 etfs i think challenges most important challenge will be i would say creating awareness about the retail investors now also when i meet retail investors not many people are aware of what actually is an etf what is the benefit of investing in etf so we as an institution are focusing a lot on creating awareness about the etfs among the investors so they realize the benefit of passive investing and etfs i think that is the biggest challenge i would say and second would be again increasing liquidity uh, trading volumes as i told you, as you also said that trading volume has been increasing but to improve liquidity trading volumes need to increase more as we move forward but i think that will happen that will happen but i think creating awareness among the retail investors would be the biggest challenge and i think that's what we as an exchange and we as an institution are focusing on even i think the mutual funds and the amcs are focusing on the same thing great Uh, well mr mukesh agarwal it was lovely speaking with you as well and i'm sure all of our viewers have gained a lot uh, from hearing you on how they can invest in etfs why it sometimes becomes really difficult to choose you know uh, among a variety of funds and and decide which one will outperform the index so instead 
you know, a Nifty 50 ETF just gives you that easy way out. And, and I'm sure like a lot of retail investors are now coming to terms with that because we are seeing this steady increase in the AUMs. The Nifty 50 one has crossed 1 lakh crores already. It's one of the most popular ones. The most number of ETFs at this point of time are, you know, benchmarked with the Nifty 50. Thank you once again, uh, Mr. Garwal, for joining us today. And folks, if you've missed out on this conversation, you can catch it on ET Now's YouTube channel. For now, we'll take a very short break right here on the show. But when we return, we in our Meteor Fund Manager segment, we will be talking to the head of ETFs with one of India's largest mutual fund house. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>